So when you're in your last week of rehearsals before yes. your new work Atomos opens here at the Laban Center, tell us about Atomos. Why, why the name Atomos? Where did that come from? I was interested in this idea of kind of uncuttable, indivisible or invisible structures. I was interested in how is it you might be able to atomize not only the body, but also um, I'm a big fan of this movie in the 80s, which I'm not going to tell you what it is, but um, something that has massive kind of resonance for me. And I wondered how I might cannibalize this movie from its kind of visual, visual content, its emotional content, its kind of physical content, its thematic content, and use that as a point of departure to grow these little physical atoms, these little mini miniature dances. So were the little were the elements that you had taken from this movie uh, so they're not the atoms themselves they are the inspiration for yeah. the atoms of dance or music yeah, or visual provocations, design you know so the, the idea is that they they stimulate you to start to grow something else either towards an idea or away from the idea so one of the things that we did for example was take all of the tonal um, colours in the whole of this movie, put them together in little pixel forms and look what that would look like visually. So all of a sudden you've got this visual kind of data stream, if you like, of um, colour and tone that has a language to it. You know, it's, it's kind of representing something of the aesthetic of that film. Um, we, I'm, I've been very interested in, recently in um, kind of biometric data. This idea of, you know, taking um, information which tells you how many steps you're walking, what, perhaps what your heart rate is. We've been working with a much more sophisticated one that does states of arousal, does adrenaline, does states of stress. Exo Studios, these brilliant um, guys who are working in fashion, rendered that information, rendered that maths into architectural structural objects that we could wear. That how? We then, how? how they 3D print them, right? So you get the numbers. You, um, you manipulate the numbers in some way that makes a kind of a structural physical form. They print them in some way, they render them in, in 3D. You have the objects, you use them to uh, make language with, and then you take the object away, you never see the object. So actually it's a translation of this intimate data that comes from the body, so a, a kind of a very uh, miniature bit of information that you can't normally see. You use it to provoke something in the studio. Right, so it's a translation of one set of information into a completely different form, yeah. which then inspires you and the dancers to create movement. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm thinking, actually, I'm thinking arms. I've got to go a right angle with my elbows. I've got two wrists, I've got a rotation of the wrists, and my fingers are just a in terms of music, it might be that I'm working with the Wing Victory for the Sun, this amazing um, duo who make these incredible kind of acoustic spaces. And this film had, at the time, a really incredible, innovative um, composer write the music the first time an electronic score was used for a film. How is it that actually you can pixelate or atomise that sound and then granulate it, go inside it and create a different kind of space in a different world? So you take a pixel, if you like, you take a very small atom of music and go inside it and create a totally different universe. So it's just this idea of kind of going right inside something and developing something, growing something from it. One of the other things that we, we've been working on for quite a long time is how is it that we can actually work with a kind of an autonomous choreographic agent, something that moves and thinks choreographically and allows us to work with it in improvisation. And we've been working on this for about 10 years and I felt increasingly that it doesn't really have enough of a body. It didn't have really enough of a body. And I felt the thing that I was missing in the studio with all these different computer programs was this body. And so I, I kind of tasked the open-ended group and the people that we've been working with to develop a kind of uh, a, a physical presence, an 11th dancer in the studio, that didn't behave in the same way as a body with a human skeleton, but had lots of the attributes of this. Um, and again, related to this film, how do, how do you do that? What drives it? What drives that physical information? How do you then use it for improvisation? We um, dissected the film into 1,200 constituent parts, and they each drive a particular part of becoming. So I can go, we can go, the dancers can just find a frame that's interesting to them, either from an emotional point of view, a colour point of view, or a physical point of from view. The a from frame the movie. from the movie. It analyses the motion analyzes the motion of what's happening, either camera motion or physical motion. It renders that into maths, and that then drives a whole series of beginnings for this becoming this creature to, to make things, make responses from. So it's, so it's doing a dance about that frame of the yeah. film, which well, it's, it's invented yeah, itself. It's, it's either drawing the maths from that, or it's trying to get as close as possible to the way in which that thing is already moving. So it's this idea of growing from something like a seed that grows into a tree, or you already have the tree, how do you grow 
towards it. Um, and what this does is it gives you a series of iterations that's taken from something which is very substantial that we're all improvising with. So the dancers are working with it, I'm working with this frame, the becoming is working with the frame, and we're all doing different responses to this. Yeah, we're all having our own responses to it. But there's a dialogue in between how we're working with it. So I might be working with a dancer with my response, making live. A dancer might be making their response with another dancer. Or a dancer might be working with the becoming object to find a different response. And what's really fantastic about becoming for me is the kinesthetic um, attributes that it um, elicits from the dancers, the way in which it makes them want to behave and to move. And because you watch it in 3D, this whole relationship between depth and um, articulation and space and feeling becomes really, really interesting. And that's something that's fueled the way in which you've generated some content. You must have to have very particular dancers in your company to be able to absorb all this science, all, this, all these shifts in the way of creating work as well as actually being brilliant performers yeah. physically. Well, I kind of do and I don't. I think, I think partly, that I think people think when we talk so much about science, it's a very cerebral process and very static. But I think one of the things about um, my process in, in making it is it's very fast, it's very active, and it's very playful. And I think we have a lot of fun in these um, experiments and ways of working. And I think that sense of play really kind of invites a particular type of curiosity and openness. So when I'm thinking about dancers, of course I have to have the technical facility. Of course I have to have the intellectual capacity and interest to actually want, want to work in these these areas but also I need this sense of child's play this absolute ability to know you might look ridiculous in 3d glasses while you're doing this but that to actually enjoy that process there's a huge amount of scientific research and thought and inquiry around the works you make with random but they're not about science why is it so important to you to conduct these inquiries while you're choreographing I think I'm just generally interested in what it is to be a human being and what it is to actually make dances. I'm interested in interrogating what is the process of making a dance. And I'm interested in that partly because also one of my big passions, as you know, is teaching. And so I'd love to be able to find some different ways of encouraging other people to make dances differently. I think dance making for me is a participatory kind of activity. And, it's, and if you're doing that, it's not like the science is bolted on or additional. It's absolutely central to the things that we're doing, but it doesn't take away from the energy of making, the invention the flashes of inspiration that come from nowhere you know it's, it's not all about sitting down and think uh, thinking and doing experiments and being stopped doing what you would normally do perhaps as a choreographer